in a global economy. The U.S. population is 5% of the world's population, but we generate 28% of global GDP, the sum of all the goods and services produced here in the U.S. It's been said, when America sneezes, the rest of the world's economies catch a cold. The government could have waited. We would have eventually come out of this recession, but it would have taken a lot longer. The U.S. economy is far more resilient than most people understand. The U.S. economy has weathered wars, terrorist attacks, all kinds of external events that would have taken down a weaker economy. Our economy is strong, and it's due to the American brand of capitalism. But the Federal Reserve is engineering this economic recovery. And if there's one thing I learned in my 20 years on Wall Street, don't bet against the Fed. You'll lose. They're not perfect, but they're really, really good. So are things getting better? The quick answer is yes. There are more people in the malls. The number of transactions that you retailers are ringing up has begun to increase. People are beginning to loosen their purse strings. And I also understand that the suit index is up, which means that he's seeing more people come into his store to buy new suits because they're getting job interviews and they're going to work. And that's a leading indicator, folks. We also know two things typically happen as we emerge from a recessionary environment. First of all, there's a lot of pent-up demand. Consumers who put off buying something in the recession, well, they'll come on out and buy it now. Also, we know, and this is a tough one, but it's going to happen, consumers typically revert to their pre-recession shopping habits. Sometimes they're subtle changes, but we've seen this happen time and time again. We have retail sales that go back over the last hundred years, and you can watch the trends. They're there. You stand back far enough, people will be back in the stores. The outline, I guess the theme of my comments this morning is that I'm looking for this holiday season to be a little better, but I still think it's going to be tough. I would say that based on the numbers out there, uh, that consumers, in fact, are becoming more optimistic. And I think they're very happy that the, that the holiday season is, is approaching us. Businesses have made the necessary corrections, and they are getting on top of things. And I think that's the situation, the more optimistic situation that we're dealing with as we go into this holiday sell selling season. The lower right is a proxy for consumers' balance sheets. And I look at the two big things that people have. One of them is going to be their home. And that's the red line, uh, the Case-Shiller Home Price Index. You can see how that's dropped very sharply. The good news is, is if you live in Richmond, you may not be happy about home prices, but I can assure you it's a lot worse in a lot of other places. So, but nonetheless, there has been some drop off, but more recently there has been some improvement. You see the uptick in that red line, that's encouraging. The other thing is the 401k, uh, that's represented by the S&P 500. We all know what a hit that took. Uh, but that is also starting to pick up as well. We've had about a 55 or 60 percent increase uh, in the stock market since, uh, since March, and I think that's trickling through to consumer optimism as well. So with that as a backdrop, let's go to the next slide and look at, our for at my forecast for 2010. Um, I have a great deal of confidence in this forecast. It is good for the next five minutes. Um, I do believe that we are turning the corner, but we'll be turning the corner into the wind. So uh, the job market is still soft. I'm, uh, I'm pleased that, uh, that the pace of layoffs is slowing quite noticeably. I think that's a pattern that's going to continue. Um, so we're going to see a, a job situation, I think, that's going to look a lot better next year than it has this year or last. Uh, from an inflation standpoint, I think that's going to remain reasonably low, but I think all the good news on the energy side is probably going to be passing. So we'll see low but higher inflation next year. The good news is, going back to Ken's remarks, the Fed is going to, in our view, is going to keep interest rates low until the economy gains traction in a very noticeable way. The last couple of weeks we've been talking about exit strategies and we've been talking about the Fed needing to be ahead of the curve and the like. I don't know, I've been watching these cycles for about 33 years and it just, um, I've watched the Fed and the heat is on right now. We need to see the economy gain some traction and I think the Fed is going to keep a friendly interest rate environment uh, until it, uh, or a friendlier interest rate environment until the economy gains noticeable traction.
Uh, the fiscal stimulus is going to continue. After all, next year is an election year. Go figure. Um, so, and as a result, I think as we go into 2010, for those people who endured last year, uh, there's a, I, I'm, I'm very optimistic that things are going to turn out fine this year, not great. Um, but as we go into 2010, I'm looking forward to a much better uh, situation. How are you all? I'm glad to be here this morning with you. And um, I'm going to start, I'm just going to give you what I call kind of a helicopter view of the Richmond economy. That's my focus, comparing Richmond to the U.S. First, we're going to look at the labor market, because that's already been talked about. It's very important that we have the creation of more jobs so that wages and salaries increase, consumers have more income, and hopefully they spend it. On the positive side, before I deliver a little bit of bad news, um, on the positive side, yesterday, con real consumer or um, personal income and uh, consumer outlays data came out, and real personal consumer expenditures went up 0.9% for the month of August. So we've had a couple of straight months of upward ticks in um, consumer expenditures. So that's, that's the good news. What you see is the growth year, uh, year over year. So that last data point is August 2008 um, to August 2009. And we've still had contraction in employment, but it seems to be leveling off. And if you look at Richmond, um, at minus 3.7 percent, but we've had just a, a few straight months where it hasn't gotten worse. So that's the good news. Unfortunately, if I were to show you just total jobs lost in the U.S., you know, we know that's been a very bad picture. In the first half of the year, we were losing about a half a million jobs per month. Uh, more recently, that number has gone down, and in August, it was minus 216,000. So, you know, significantly less than we had been experiencing in the first half of the year. So um, what I wanted to show more related directly to job growth or job contraction is where we have lost jobs and where we have gained some jobs in the Richmond economy. And, um, you know, in absolute numbers as well as in percentage terms, that's where we've seen the greatest loss. On the other hand, we've had, um, not in percentage terms, but in absolute numbers in the Richmond MSA, an offsetting increase in education and health services jobs. In the Richmond MSA, we've lost 23,000 jobs from August of 08 to August of 2009. But other areas that have been really hitting the economy hard and have been you know, dragging us down, the housing market, as I mentioned. And we have seen some definite healing in that area if we look at the statistics. We've, had, we've seen the trough and existing home sales are coming up. And that's very good because we need to clear that excess inventory of homes in order to have new building and generate jobs in that construction sector that's been so hard hit. And so this is one of the bright spots, one of the, what we call green shoots as economists. This is one of them. You know, we have a number of indicators still to watch and employment and unemployment are certainly very important. As I said, we need to have um, stronger job growth. I, I believe we have, we have hit that trough and we are on the way up, but if we can get a little stronger job growth, then that will help us to have a sustained recovery and pull out a little bit more quickly. I continue to remain cautiously optimistic. I think that this year will be a little bit better than last year, and because I just can't imagine that it would be any worse, and I think that the effect of, cons of, the, of those of us who have um, been fortunate enough to keep our jobs, which is you know, quite a few people, um, that we were kind of holding back last year and we're not really holding back as much now. You know, we've kind of been through some time with this. We, we know kind of we're gonna be okay. Things aren't completely falling apart. There was a, a lot more anxiety, I think, last year at this time than we have now, and I think that's gonna translate into a lot of that pent-up demand coming out of the wallet. So, thank you.